Hello and welcome back to the weekly Q&A. A weekly Q&A that's actually on time for once. Can you believe it? I didn't think Lumen had it in him. No, me neither. Me neither. But here I am, recording it right now, and my wall is slightly more complete because the tapestry of the ages is up. Look at that thing, it's magnificent! The colors are so vibrant. It's got an image or two. One or two little like snippets from each and every Ultima game that exists on it. It's really cool. You can Google it. I'm not even sure it's called the Tapestry of the Ages. I might have just made that up, but whatever. I like it. It's up there and it's actually causing some problems for me because when I record my face cam in games, I generally open up a really bright screen. So it's like an empty browser or notepad or something that's very white on my second monitor right here. So it makes some light on my face. But now with that up there, it actually reflects what I have on this screen on that back there and then there's this big white square in my face cam so I have to take that off if I record at night. So now I generally tend to try and record during the day and I just turn the lights down. It seems to work. But anyway, I got kind of sidetracked there. So a few things before I actually start the questions. There are some really, really cool questions this week and I'm joined by the 70s gloss. I don't know why it's the 70s gloss. It could just be the fruit gloss because there's like there's some oranges and lemons on there or something, but still, it just reminds me of the 70s. Not that I was around in the 70s, but if I was, you know, this would make me think of them. Remember them fondly, no doubt. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so, Movember. No shave November. That's this. A bunch of my gameplay videos are going to have me with a beard and I, you know I wouldn't really call this a beard there's actually a question about it coming up and this is such a patchy affair that I don't know if I'd call it a beard I wouldn't go as far as to call it something like that beards are glorious I love beards but this isn't really a beard this is scrappy so it kind of suits me I like scrappy I like being scrappy I like doing scrappy things so perfect now the next point on my list that should have actually been here but it's not is the fact that our internet is so so bad right now I've been having so much trouble with uploads failing and generally I can just if the upload fails if the browser closes somehow I can resume it but I've had this problem that sometimes I'm not even able to open YouTube. I'm not even able to play YouTube videos browse websites stuff like that because our internet is just so slow and so bad at the moment and so inconsistent that bad things are happening. Things are slower than they should be. And if you some days see me only uploading one video, then that's probably why. Until we get it fixed at least, then there's no excuse. The problem that I'm having at right now is that our connection has been limited to a one meg connection where we're supposed to actually have a four meg connection. We're paying for four meg. We've been paying for it for the past month and a half. And we've only been getting 1 meg speeds. We still, right now, paying for 4 meg connection. But they are unable to give us 4 meg speeds. And that's not because of where we live in. Or because of the current circumstances in the area. No. It's nothing like that. They just messed something up on their side. They flipped some switch that they shouldn't have flipped. And now our internet is terrible. It's painful. Let me tell you it's painful. We've got two internet connections here now. The one is actually, and if I suck at talking right now, I apologize. It's like really late. It's not really late. It's 10 o'clock and I've been recording all day. I've been trying to play catch up because I've just been having a bad time with making videos for some reason. I don't know. But I got a whole bunch of cool stuff recorded today. Tomorrow is going to be so much fun because I'm finally uploading a Guild Wars video that I've been waiting to upload for two weeks already and I can't wait to see what you guys think of it okay we'll see about it tomorrow you can see it tomorrow uh, that'll actually be today I am just keep saying tomorrow but it'll be uploaded on the same day as this Q&A but you'll see that when it goes up back to the internet we've got two connections one is on the other PC over there my mom's old PC and that's a one meg connection I know that's a one meg connection it's meant to be a one meg connection because the upload rate on a one meg and a four meg in South Africa is exactly the same. Uh, you get 52 kilobytes or kilobit kilobytes a second up. That's half a meg up. And I just use that for uploading constantly. I kind of always have it running with generally, I'd say, with the bigger stuff like 
Dishonored, Path of Exile, whatever. Gameplay commentaries, Skyrim, stuff like that. Even this Q&A might go up on there. And then the smaller stuff that takes less time, like the newsmen's or the vlogs or FTL actually was a kind of small upload. Stuff like that goes on this connection uh, so that it doesn't bother us for too long. Because when we upload in something, then the internet is unusable. So that's, that's just the situation here right now. Both connections are limited to one meg and it's not cool, okay? Because the four meg is four times the speed. And the problem is that with the one meg, you can't do more than one thing on the connection at the same time. So if I open a YouTube video here, then Helene, who sits over there, will be unable to do anything whatsoever. She will be so badly drained on her side there that nothing will work. Her Guild Wars will have a five, six second delay, and I'm talking five or six seconds. You'll cast a spell and you'll be like, okay, okay, is it coming up? Is it going to happen? And then pff, there goes the spell. <laughs> That's how it is. Okay. And I have phoned them literally every second day for the past two weeks, but they give me nothing. I spoke to them today and they said, well, yes, yes, Mr. Paulson. I see now that you have had this problem or this fault logged with us for the past 14 days and you still haven't had it resolved. And I'm like, yes, yes, that's what I'm telling you. That's exactly what I'm telling you. And they're like, okay, well, I'll put a little note here, a special note. Customer has phoned again and is still unsatisfied. Is that note okay? Then I say, yes, that note is just fine. And then he puts the note there and I'm going to phone him back tomorrow. To see what happens. Anyway, I'm done. I'm finished. We're having some internet trouble. We're trying to get it sorted out. <sighs> done. Finished. Done. That's it. I've been wanting to get a channel update video out as well. But I've been delaying that because I want to announce some stuff or reveal some stuff in it. That once done, I want to start or put in motion. So, once announced at least. So that's going to be just delayed slightly till I can actually get this internet thing sorted out and that's that. Don't worry, it's coming. Probably before November is done because I want to at least do the channel update with this going on. I want to do that. So we're going to get to the questions now. I apologize for rambling. I'll put a little annotation up for anyone that doesn't want to actually listen to all of this and just wants to see the questions. Here we go. Killistic1, can you do a playthrough of Diablo 2 and do you and Eileen still play Guild Wars 2? So, the chances are very slim that I do a playthrough of Diablo 2. The number one reason would probably be because of the silly aspect ratio on that game. Can you even play that in widescreen? No, probably not. But regardless of that, I don't want to go back and play an old game that's still as fresh in everyone's mind as that. Now, I want to mention that I have something coming up that's going to let me or allow me to focus on some slightly older stuff soon. It's going to be coming up on the channel soon. But it's not going to be a long-term focus like a let's play kind of thing or a playthrough. It's going to be something else. So I'm sure you're going to like that, Killistic. And everyone else will like it too. I want this to be, this, this new series that I'm starting up to be as important as Newsman is to the channel. But more fun. In the sense that it's not going to be news. Because <laughs> some people don't like news. Anyway, we both still play Guild Wars. Helene plays it much more than I do right now. She plays it a lot. I probably log in every day or two and play for an hour or two. I'm going to be playing so much this weekend, okay? I'm going to be online most of the weekend that I can, all, all the time that I can be, and especially all the time that the events are going to be running for the Lost Shores thing, because I'm really keen for that, and all of it seems like a lot of fun. So, we both still play, obviously. Yes. How can we not? Don't be foolish. Now, Bromanciful. I think that's what your nickname is. Hey Lumen, I sent you an email on Guild Wars 2 um, about Guild Luminati. Have you seen it or thought about it? That's the question. You know, it would probably help if you actually rather just ask the question here. Because if it's in Guild Wars, um, then the chances are I either did get it and ignored it for some reason. If it was, can I be invited to the guild, then I probably just ignored it. Because... I keep mentioning everywhere that there's a waiting list on the forums, you can check it out. Uh, there are more questions about the forums and about the guild stuff coming up in this. So it's actually three questions away, I can see it over there. So don't worry, we'll talk about that more. But when it comes to asking me questions about Guild Wars 2 and the guild, I 
I generally tend to throw all of them over to Eileen's side or just refer people straight to the forums to check there because most of the questions have the same answers and most of the questions get asked over and over again. Things like, can we make another guild? That's actually one that's coming up now. I'll, I'll answer that when it comes up. And things like, how long is the waiting list taken? Also going to answer that now. Um, what server do we play on? Aurora Glade? I don't know. Stuff like that. Okay. But I'll see about them as we go through this video. Next question. Hey Lumen, did you beat Diablo on Inferno? This is from X Captain Rainbows X. So I guess it's just Captain Rainbows. <laughs> that is a strange nickname. But I like it. I didn't beat Diablo on Inferno. I didn't. I have to be perfectly honest here. I got to the middle of Act 2 and then I stopped because it was all the same stuff over and over again. I am so keen to jump back into Diablo, but I want PvP to be there. I want to be able to play some PvP. I think that by the time PvP is added, there's going to be a whole lot more in the game. There's already Paragon levels, the Infernal Machine, Monster Power, a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't even tried yet. And it's just sitting there waiting. So I'll jump back in there soon, give it another try, see if it tickles my fancy this time around. I did enjoy it immensely. Don't get the wrong idea, I loved Diablo. The story was fun, the game was amazingly cool to play through, and I had a blast. Okay, I really did, but I just can't spend so much time playing one game. And I suppose that that sort of links directly to why I don't play Guild Wars so much. I'm at the point in my life and my career on YouTube that I can't spend too much time on a game, on one specific game, because I've just got so much other stuff to do. So there you go. Uh, next question is from someone called Vadim Semochkin. Vadim Simochkin. I love that name. I would just be able to say Simochkin all day long. He asked me something in Russian that looks like Ektbertit Iwipikshne. Did I say that right? How was my pronunciation? Probably not very good. It's something like, do you speak Russian or is this Russian or, or are you Russian? Something like that. I threw it in Google Translate and that's what they gave me. I can't answer that question, buddy. I'm sorry. Tigerhawk, Lumen, can you speak Afrikaans? I can. I can speak Afrikaans, but my Afrikaans has degraded so sure buyer that I can't speak Afrikaans because it sounds so bad. And I don't want to do it. Yeah! You can't speak Afrikaans anymore, so I don't want to speak Afrikaans to speak Afrikaans. So I don't do it. I don't do it anymore. I overdramatized that a bit. But that's Afrikaans for you. And you know the funny thing is, as an English person that speaks Afrikaans first language, okay, I've got an accent, but as an English person that speaks Afrikaans first language, I need to sit back a bit. There we go. I can rock on my chair now. And if Eileen was here, then she'd like come and push me back down and say, no, don't do that. She didn't like it. But I do. I like rocking my chair. Anyway. As an English person that speaks Afrikaans first language, I love listening to how other people speak Afrikaans. Because I notice the differences in the way they speak, the accent, their pronunciation, the tone of voice, so much more than they do. Seemingly so much more than they do. I don't know if I do. Maybe they do and they don't say anything. But I just love it. Some Afrikaans people speak so deeply and they, they change their voice so much when they talk that it's just so fascinating to me. Afrikaans is a, is, it's very expressive. Okay, it's very, very expressive. And I like it. But anyway, regardless of that, I don't speak much Afrikaans anymore, if any. Like a little bit here and there. Uh, we just speak mostly English now. Hi, Lumen. This is from Nikki X V Z S A V M. Maybe it's Nikki Zam or X Zam or some Nikki. It's from Nikki. Hi Lumen, I've got a good question. Since there are so many people that want to join the Luminati, would it be possible to make some sort of second guild for us and maybe Luminati alts? Um, the alts actually get included in the main guild, so you just need one invite and all your alts are in there with your main character, everything. It's your account that gets invited, not your character. So get out of your screensaver. I gotta remember to move my mouse every now and then. That's bad. So, let me just check if everything's still recording. It is. Okay, I'm so bad at this. I'm new to this whole recording in front of the PC thing using the webcam thing, so I'm hoping this video comes out okay. I'm hoping. We'll see. Um, <clears throat> I know it'd be 
It wouldn't be the real Illuminati, but it would be better than having us wait so long to be able to join a fun active guild when a second guild could be made. All that said, I don't know how m I don't know much about how the guild system in Guild Wars 2 works, but hopefully something like that is possible. Now, it is possible. But the problem is that the guild would probably be such a barren place. The second guild would be so empty, seeing that right now, I'm not going to sugarcoat this or anything. There are like probably 80% inactive members. And we know most of the people are inactive. But we can't do anything about that because it would be unfair for us to kick someone because we think they're inactive. And therein lies the problem. We can't see if they're inactive or not. We just can't see it because... Guild Wars 2 and ArenaNet and everything, well, ArenaNet and Guild Wars 2, they just haven't set up a proper way of monitoring guild activity, um, seeing how long someone's been idle, AFK, whatever you want to call it. The guild system sucks. Added to that, when you press G to open your guild menu, then your game lags so, so much for some reason. I don't know why, but regardless, you can't see how long someone's been AFK, but... The spaces are freeing up relatively quickly. I know it's taking long, but I suppose I could just say that if any of you are watching this right now and you are in the guild but you haven't played for a long time and don't see yourself playing in the near future, you could possibly just leave the guild, give someone else a spot and rejoin later. There you go. We've got a good core group of players that play a lot and are always online and are always having fun. I know because I see Helene as one of them. And... Uh, other than that, there are people that just log in, log out, log in, log out, play a little bit here and there, and we can't see who they are and who are the ones that are just perma AFK. So we, we're working on some way of doing it, but I don't think that making a second guild would be good, unless enough people say they want to do it. You know, if I see 10 of you saying on the comment in the comment section here that you'd want a second guild, then fine. But it would be like, it would be kind of counter fun. Because you'd be in a guild with far fewer people than 500, and I just think it would be kind of lonely at times. But then again, you can jump between guilds with the click of a button, with no repercussions, so it could be worth it. I don't know. Next question. Epic Socket. That's one glorious stash you've got going there. Or stash. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I never use that word. I don't use the word mustache very much because I just don't like it. But um, thank you. Thank you. Any tips on how to grow a great stash, stash, mustache, whatever, and or take good care of it? <laughs> oh. Thank you, 70s gloss. Now that's a question I really and truly can't answer. Because I don't know. I kind of dislike shaving. I have one of these little shavers that goes on your face with these three little things. And I never use that side of the shaver because the back has this little piece that flips up and then it's just like a like a head shaver. That kind of like that. The back has a thing that flips up like that and I use that on my face. It's not a head shaver. It's actually made for trimming. It's called a trimmer. I use that everywhere on my face. So it gives me like a perma stubble. I do shave pretty clean, but it's, it's I still have a, sh a stubble. Every now and then I shave totally clean and then I look like a little boy and I don't like it. But, you know... As for growing a mustache and caring for it, I don't know. I just don't know. Get lots of sunlight. That's probably good. Not too much, because you'll get skin cancer. And that's just negative. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I think that I have probably the most patchy face hair growth pattern known to man. And I'm the last person you should be asking. Ask someone like, who has a good beard? Go ask Ray William Johnson. His beard is growing out very evenly. I don't know, I just watched his latest video and I saw that it looks pretty good. You know, there are lots of people out there that'll know much more about this than me. Anyway, thank you very much. I can give you some tips on hair. Now that's something I know about. And I suppose this is also hair, so I should actually know about it as well. But if someone had to ask about hair tips, I'd tell them all about that. Or at least, if someone had to ask about how to do my hair, then I'd tell them about that. If I could make a barbershop where I only did lumen hair all day, every day, then I'd probably be the most successful and professional barber out there. Or hairdresser, not barber. More 
hairdresser than barber, but still. Regardless. Next question. Chips asks, Hi Lumen, as a fellow South African and avid mine sweeper player, you know that game that comes with Windows? I have something like 300, uh, 3,000. That's scary. 3,000 hours under my belt. Wow. I'm in shock. I haven't even opened Minesweeper up since I got my new PC. I don't even know what it looks like on Windows 7. Now that I think of it, I'm not going to do it. But the question is, I always like asking people whether they've played it. So have you or Helene ever played my beloved Minesweeper? If so, what are your best times? Have you ever completed an expert level game? Best wishes, Chips, aka uh, Tuan Tuanel on Guild Wars 2. There you go. I have seen that name before and I still don't know how to say it. But Minesweeper, no. I don't play it. I have played it before. I haven't even finished the basic level. The most basic level. I just... God, oh, it hurts my head. It makes my brain hurt thinking about all those little numbers that pop up. I know that it's supposed to be something like if there's a one, then it means there's one mind touching it somewhere. And if there's two, then it's two minds touching it. But that alone is just mind-doggling to me. I can't work these things out. I can't think to myself now, is there going to be one there or is it going to be there instead? I don't know. So that said, my times are terrible and I've definitely not completed an expert level game. Helene, I think I actually was the one who introduced her and showed her how to play Minesweeper, so she is even worse than me at it. We're both terrible. <laughs> but that's impressive. I'm sure that you have some seriously sick times on Minesweeper that I don't even want to think about. I know there are people that complete them in like under 10 seconds or something like that. I'm not one of those people. Definitely not. Now, Frupelkungen. Okay, Lumen, here's a big one. Are you ready for it? Well, you better be. If you could make your own game, what would it be about? And what uh, will that game world be like? And what will the main character be like? And one last but not least, uh, what will you make? What will make your game different from others? Thanks for answering, and please describe with a lot of detail. Also, what will next week's lottery numbers be? <laughs> oh, wise one! Ah. <sighs> I'd say go for the lost numbers every single week till the day you die and then when they one day get lucky then wow that will be special go for the lost numbers it's like what is it 12 4 13 32 48 I don't even know what the lost numbers are anymore I watched that series like years ago but I've answered this question before I will answer it in broad strokes now i know you asked me to be very detailed but you know this will take me an entire hour to talk about just because there's so much to talk about so i said before that if i made a game my number one concern or my number one idea with it would be freedom of choice i would want to make like the ultimate sandbox kind of game and you know what's funny is that I've been following the, the Kickstarter for Star Citizen and that is turning into what looks like my perfect game. With the amount of stuff in that game for people to do, with the size of the universe, with the fact that it's sci-fi themed, those are all things that I love. Big universe, lots of stuff, sci-fi. I like it. So, what I said before about making a game was that I'd want people to be able to do what they want in the game. Now, I'm going to skip and leave out the question of what would the main character be like, because I'd want people to make their own characters, and the chances are it would be a big multiplayer thing. I said before that a few things that I'd want to take from other games would be things like... From Pokemon, I'd want some sort of collection thing for pets and stuff like that. Uh, just because I feel that that's something that players like to do. You put something in that can pretty much never end, that you can never complete, then people will be busy for a great long time. You want a lot of randomness in your game. But if I had to say broad strokes, I'd make a game, and I, I apologize again for not going into much detail, but I'd make a game that would give people a lot of freedom. If I had to say where I'd set this game, I would say near future, near to... 
slightly distant future. So probably in the 20s, 2050, 2077. I don't know how I came by that year. <laughs> but I like the future portrayed in things like Blade Runner, Firefly, uh, what, Deus Ex, things like that. That's my kind of future. The kind of future that I think would be a lot of fun to live in, to experience, to have a game set in. So that's the kind of future I would go with. That's the setting I would go with. I'm a big fan of post-apocalyptic, so maybe it could be a post-apocalyptic future. Not now, future. Who knows? But what would make it different would be that it would give players freedom. And the thing is, a lot of games tote that. They say that they're giving you all the freedom that you want, but there are always so many limitations. The problem is that a game like that would literally take ages to get set up. But, you know, it's funny that some games, like back in the day, Ultima Online, gave people a ton of freedom. Too much freedom, some would say. Because a lot of people went into the game and they just didn't know what to do. They were just plonked in this world and then they were like, huh? What now? And that was a problem for people. But, I don't know, I just don't know. I would love to one day be involved in a game's creation. And if I was, let me just put it in this way, I would probably be much more on the side that would be doing the creative development. I would love to write a story for a game. I would love to work on a setting for a game. A world. Create the creatures within it, the people, the races, the locations, everything. Stuff like that. Even zone concepts. Not drawings, but the ideas. Stuff like that I would be thrilled to work on. Because I've got a ton of ideas up here that I just never really channel, I suppose. I have. Okay, I've written a whole bunch of stuff for our book that we were working on, but we kind of put on hold for now. And it's amazing. The world that I set up is amazing, if I do say so myself. I'm in love with it, but I haven't been able to do anything with it yet. I'm going to in the future, uh, but when it, if I had to answer all of those, I'd say, um, what would it be about? Okay, so it would be something that allows players to play together. So I'd say multiplayer slash MMO type game. It doesn't need to be an MMO, but, you know, it's probably better if it is. If it's a persistent world, I'd probably enjoy something like that more. I'd say Persistent World. There you go, it would be a Persistent World. And uh, what would make uh, what would that game world be like? I explained that already. Uh, main character explained that. Last but not least, what would make it different from others? Freedom, choice, fun. <laughs> there are lots of games that offer that right now. Adventure! Grand Adventure! There you go, that's it. It's just such a difficult question, but it's something I do want to talk about in the future, so just keep watching the channel and I'll probably get a video up at some point discussing stuff like this. So there you go. Now, Minkinu, Minkainu. I can't say your name. After so long, I still can't say it. Hey Swin, how is your partnership with the game station working out for you so far? Not asking about specific numbers here, which you aren't even allowed to disclose anyway, but was the increase in revenue gained enough for you to be able to support the channel and Helene, Nero, and you in the long run with the views you currently get? Also, do you still... Let's stop there for now. Hold on. And let me answer that. The Game Station partnership is wonderful. It's absolutely amazing. The people in the Game Station are so cool. I, I love them. Okay, I like all the channels that are partnered with it. And I like the fact that they're so friendly and they're such nice people. I like the people that are behind the scenes. Aaron, if you're watching this... Big thumbs up from me. You're amazing. And because of that, it's just been a pleasant experience. It just has been. Um, I enjoy every single interaction that I have with other Game Station people. I think that the staff that work with the Game Station that do all the behind-the-scenes stuff are really cool. They are down-to-earth people that you can just have a chat with if you want to, and that's great. But... Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that you probably knew already or kind of expected, okay? So, they're great. They're good. They're always looking out for us. They're always sending us update emails about things that have changed on YouTube. And I really appreciate all of that, and that's very cool. 
Was the increase in revenue gained enough for you to be able to support the channel, Helene and Nero? Uh, and you in the long run with the views you currently get. So, the increase in revenue was pretty big because I could put ads on my gameplay videos, but it's still pretty minuscule compared to what big people get on YouTube right now and what people would expect you'd need to live on because I'm not making a lot of money. Okay, I can just say that right now. I'm not going to talk about specifics, but I don't make much money at all. I make very little money, especially considering that recent views have been low. My subscribers went pretty fast from around 10,000 to 15,000, but from 15,000 to where we are now, which is about 15,550, it's been really slow. It's kind of out of my control. I mean, I'm working so hard to try and get videos up that people will like, that people will share with their friends, that people will tell other people about, but it's difficult. If there are any other people out there that are just starting YouTube up, they'll know what I'm talking about. If there are other people out there that are bigger than me on YouTube, they'll also know what I'm talking about because it's just a tough thing to work with. It takes constant effort on your part as the creator of content and you have to constantly rack your brain about trying to think of things that you want to do. Try be creative, try be interesting, try be different, try be worth watching. It's not easy. So because of that, um, my views on, I'd say, the normal gameplay stuff haven't been that high. A lot of my views, in general, have just been pretty low. I get around a thousand views on average per video now, some much lower, some a little bit higher, and then I rely on the kind of big stuff to actually bring me in views. If I was just relying on my day-to-day -day views, things like the uploads that I do, like this one, for instance, or my Dishonored, or my Newsmans and stuff like that, I probably wouldn't be making nearly enough to be able to survive. But um, right now I'm getting a lot of views on other stuff like my Guild Wars character creation video, my celebrity character video, and those videos are still getting views to the day, my armor videos. The Guild Wars armor videos are getting tons of views, and those are what helped me actually make it. But let me make one thing clear again, I don't make a lot of money. The fact that um, I'm able to survive on what we make, and yes, we do survive, but you got to remember I don't pay for rent here. I'm living in my parents' old house. They moved out. We're living, living here without paying rent. Um, I pay for the bare necessities. We pay for electricity, you know, municipal stuff. Uh, we pay for our own food and stuff. But I have to just point out that all those costs are probably much lower than the same costs would be for anyone living outside of South Africa. This is something I actually love talking about because... Uh, a lot of people are not aware of how things work in different countries, and that's not their own fault. It's just some countries just aren't exposed to the rest of the world as much as, say, South Africa is. But I can tell you now that, again, I've said this many times, I, anyone in South Africa, myself included, would be able to survive on much less than someone overseas would. So I make money um, from the game station, from YouTube and stuff like that. I make dollars. I bring the dollars over to South Africa via PayPal and because I get my paycheck in dollars, I it ends up being much more. I make more than I would if I was earning Rand because one dollar equals eight Rand sixty or something. And because of that conversion, I end up getting a lot out and again, I can survive on a lot less than I would have if I was living overseas. So I would say I'm not making enough to be able to support myself fully because I'm not paying for rent, as I said, but then again, I don't need to because we are lucky enough to be able to stay in my parents' house and we stay in here alone, obviously. We've got someone renting the flat above us here. Above us here. He's probably listening to me right now thinking, why won't this guy shut up already? He's not. He's not thinking that. He's probably still awake playing games. But that said, I make enough for us to survive right now, but I'm not making enough... Uh, if I was, let's just say if I was in a different situation, it wouldn't have been enough. Not that I'm complaining. Perfectly happy. I'm happy with the growth. I'm happy with all of you watching my videos. I'm happy with the game station. I'm happy with everything that's going on right now. I'm happy with life. Okay. Uh, but sure, I am going to be even happier when my channel does get bigger and I'm able to do more than just support us. Because right now... I think we are living on the bare minimums. We're trying to save as much money as we can. We're trying to cut corners here and there. Uh, we don't spend extra money on anything we don't need, obviously. Uh, I'm not able to just 
buy new games that come out. I don't do that. I only buy games that I'm going to be playing uh, on my channel that'll actually make money back for me. Stuff like that. And it's sad, but I have to make those choices. At the end of the day, that's just what everyone goes through. That's life. So if you were thinking, or if anyone out there was thinking, well, when I get to 15,000, I can make a living. I can support myself, my wife, and my child like Lumen's doing, except he doesn't have a child, he's got a dog. <laughs> but that's not the case. So don't get the wrong idea. I'm trying to just say things as straight as they are. Put them as plainly as I can. So there you go. That's that. The second part of the question, and I'm sorry if I just talked in circles there or didn't answer your question properly. I'm trying to explain it, but it's a little bit difficult. There's a lot to cover. Second part of the question, do you still get some donations via PayPal for the second internet line? Bottom line is that I just wanted to know if you three are doing okay. Slash hugs. Thank you for the hug. We are doing amazingly well uh, just because we're all happy. I'm happy, Helene's happy, and Nero's happy, and that's it. I've got the most supportive parents in the world. So if anything were ever to go wrong, if I ever stop getting a lot of views on any of my stuff, if I start making less money every month, they would still be there to support me. They would urge me on, tell me, well, Lumen, make another hit video. Let it go viral. Best of luck to you with that. They would, they would do that, okay? Um, and the best of luck part is because they wouldn't be able to help me with it, with the making of it, but they would help me in telling me that, you know, you should be doing it. But regardless of that, they would support us if we had any financial problems, and that's that. As for getting donations, you know, I get a tiny bit here and there, but I don't ask for donations actively, so it's fine. You know, I don't want to put anyone else um, out. I, know, I don't know how to say this properly, but I don't want to inconvenience anyone because of anything I'm going through. We are perfectly okay, so don't worry about us. We are all happy. So that's it. Super Timuki. What do you think of the new iOS game Curiosity? I've got it on my phone right now. My phone is right here. No, I wasn't playing it or anything. I wish I could give you a much more thorough answer on this, but let me just read the rest of the question first. Let me get to that. And secondly, I just apologize that my voice is sounding like it is. I'm, as I said, it's late. I've been recording all day and I wanted to get this Q&A out on time. But the Yogg's cars have a 10 minute video on it, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I am always impressed by the Yogg's cars. They somehow surprise me all the time. I sometimes think to myself, well, you know, um, these guys do the same stuff over and over again, always with the same you know, stuff that I'm not always interested in or whatever, because I don't watch all their videos. I'll be honest, I don't watch their Minecraft stuff, but they put out some genuinely interesting stuff, and the way they talk about games and stuff is just so much fun to watch. I also watched the recent interview that they had with Warwick Davis. I think his name is Warwick Davis. That was so funny. That guy is so good. Anyway, regardless, I watched the video. Um, where was I? It's kind of a social experiment-ish game in which people just pop blocks from a cube to reveal a platform beneath the one already there. Um, and the person to pop the last block in the game gets a secret message that no one else will get. What do you think will happen with the message? Are you curious to find out what it is? I absolutely love the idea of the game. This was made by Peter Molyneux and I'm a huge fan and supporter of his. He is amazing. That guy, he's such <laughs> an out-of-the-box thinker that it gets a bit much sometimes, but I appreciate that. You need people like that in the gaming community to be able to get those new ideas out there because you know how I see him? I see him as that crazy guy, the crazy inventor out there that everyone's always watching, but some people don't respect, some people don't take seriously, but when he every now and then comes out of something brilliant, it falls flat on its face, but people take that. Strip it to its bare bones, use the ideas that he came up with, those base ideas, and make something brilliant from that. Even if his games have sometimes been brilliant, some others haven't been. So he's just a thinker, and I like that. I appreciate that, and this game kind of proves it. Curiosity proves that once again. Now, I can't tell you very much about Curiosity because... I can't play it. I can't play it. I get a lot of server connection errors, which a lot of people... My my face is itching. I apologize. 
<laughs> I'm not used to having a beard type thing, but I can't play it because our 3G, our cell phone reception here at our house is just too bad. And our 1 meg Wi-Fi, which is now 1 meg and not 4 meg anymore, is incapable of streaming what's going on on that cube. Just can't do it. So what happens is I'm still stuck on that layer with the big blobby things on. This it was the first layer that they unveiled. It's kind of stuck there and it doesn't want to refresh. Um, I did see on the one side of the cube a new one that looked kind of like parsnips or something. I don't even know what that was. Maybe they were spring onions. But basically I love the idea but I can't just I can't get involved in it because the technology of our great third world country is limiting me. So that said, I am super curious about what's inside the cube. And the idea that they have of only one person getting the message is brilliant. You know, when they get to the last layers, which is going to be a while, Molyneux has given himself a ton of time. He has so much control over what's going on, it's frightening. He can make it go slower and faster at the press of a button, probably. And he's probably dictating how many layers there'll be, how quick the cube will be whittled down. But I think it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And what'll happen to the message? Man, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like, something totally arb arbitrary, random, like, be happy, life is short. That's the message. But you know what I do hope is that the last person that sees it manages to do this and take a screen cap of it and show it to the world because I will just, I will lose it if I don't get to see what's inside there. That's all I'm saying. Next question. Phew. This is from Omar Ro Omar Rock. Or Omar Omar Roke? I don't know. Question for the next week. What are your thoughts on gay marriage, same sex, equal marriage rights being fought here? What? Oh, sorry. That was I totally missed that comma. What are your thoughts on gay marriage? Same sex equal marriage rights being fought for uh, here in the USA. Do you agree that love no, no, knows no bounds and no borders? How are gay rights over there in South Africa? Do you have gay friends you care about? Thanks for your insight. I like this question. I like it very much. My thoughts are exactly as you say, love has no bounds and borders. I just don't see what the big deal is. I just don't see it. You know, let me tell you right now that while evolution maybe says that a man should be with a woman, it doesn't say that that's the only way it should be. It doesn't say you can't fall in love with another man if you're a male. It doesn't say that if you're a girl, you can't have a girlfriend or have a female wife. None of that is set in stone. I'm sure there's something in the Bible about it, and I don't want to get religion involved in any way whatsoever. But my feelings are you should always just do what makes you happy. You know, people get in such a big tiffy about stuff like this, in such a big fuss about stuff like this, that really doesn't concern them. How can you, how can you feel uncomfortable when you walk down the street and see a man with another man living his own life, probably being happy. Because, I'm just saying this, that people that are gay are generally much more expressive. And I always see gay people, and I think to myself, man, those people look so much happier than those people over there staring at them, judging them. So I may seem like I'm passionate about this, and you'd be right. I, I would say that this is something that's silly. It is like the most silly thing ever to make a big deal about and people should just forget all about it forget that there are these rules in place and live their life like the way they want to that's it that's my thought on it i don't even know how that is viewed in south africa my parents <laughs> that's bull and that's his husband bob they married that was it you know it wasn't like hey there's that gay couple we don't like them. They didn't do that. My parents never did that. It wasn't normal for us. It was everyday life and it wasn't out of the ordinary in any way. I'm sure we had, I'm not I'm sure, we had 
uh, gay or lesbian or whatever family friends. I think gay covers both. Um, but family friends in the past. I don't actually right now have any gay friends as far as I can tell. No, I actually don't. Thinking back, I may know a few that used to be in school with me or whatever. I don't actually have that many friends. I've got very few friends, but they are very good friends. So, um, yeah, I, I just think that it's such a silly thing. As for gay rights in South Africa, you know, I just don't know. I don't think it's as big a deal as it is over in the US because in the US I think people do sort of get carried away with stuff like this and here there are bigger things to worry about. They really are. So I think most people just, you know, they may give it a second glance but they don't worry too much about it. As far as I know. I don't know if it's actually legal here, if you can just if it's outlawed or whatever or anything like that I'd have no idea I don't keep in the loop with stuff like that but there you go that's my insight that's what I think about it I think people should just drop it okay let other people do what they want with their lives you worry about your own life that's it Telugi 88 quick and simple have you ever played EverQuest or EverQuest 2 and second related to the first are you looking forward to EverQuest next well, as much as you can be, given the complete lack of information that exists on it right now. I read an article about EverQuest Next a while ago, and... Wait, let me first answer the first part of that. So, I have played EverQuest 2. I've not played EverQuest 1, but I do know a bit about EverQuest. I've seen it a little bit, I've seen a bit of it. And, honestly, I think that the game is okay. You know, I'm impressed that it's still running right now, but... Um, that's about it. I haven't played it extensively. As for EverQuest Next, I love the ideas that they're putting out there. They say it's going to be the biggest sandbox MMO out there ever. I don't know. I think that's where I read about it. But as you said, they've given so little information about it. I think that the EverQuest world is so big and so well fleshed out that whatever they do with it, it's probably going to be amazing. And I can't wait for it. Super keen. Going to be fun. That said... One game that I'm looking forward to even more is probably Star Citizen, but that's like two years away, so... <sighs> Star Citizen. Why? Why? Why would they do that? Now, there's actually a question here that I was just contemplating now whether I should answer or not. I'm going to try and do it quickly because I'm already at like 15 minutes here, and... Oh, I don't even know if I'm at 15 minutes yet, but... Helene is sleeping and I'm probably making a noise and keeping her awake. So I'm going to answer this now. This is from Spencer and this was actually sent to me via an email. He didn't actually ask me to answer this in the Q&A but I'm doing it anyway because I feel that it's something that a lot of people would ask as well. Now, this is an incredible, there's an incredible lack of detail as to how many successful YouTubers record themselves. Many of them have vaguely explained how they do it, but, always, but I always have questions. You explained in your Q&A at great lengths on how you record and edit your videos, but one little bit that I listened um, with in great anticipation for was how you record your face and voice. I know you use a webcam, but do you record in a low resolution or high? Also, do you use Fraps audio or does your webcam, uh, do you use webcam audio? Or something separate like Audacity. If you do use them separately, how do you manage to sync it all up? So, here we go. I'm going to try and make it as straightforward and simple as possible. Uh, but, firstly, I use Fraps. Fraps has an amazingly good sound recorder. It records, I would say, pretty lossless sound and video. The video is 100% lossless, but the sound is really, really good. So, I generally tend to like to use Fraps. For audio and video it's not as good so if you can you should probably record it as a backup in something else as well there's no reason for you not to record it and I've done this before right now I'm busy recording my webcam which is recording the footage the video footage the audio and uh, the video footage, video footage and the audio and I'm busy recording in Sony Vegas the audio separately just in case but, back to what you asked. So I use Fraps to record the audio and the gameplay video. Then, what I do is I have Fraps open. I open my Logitech webcam software because that is the best one I could find. And I'm so unhappy with the fact that there is no good webcam recording software out there. 
Most people use Windows Movie Maker and I honestly just don't get why they do that because that program is terrible. Not that webcam software from Logitech is much better, but I use this and when I do record my gameplay footage, I record at 480p, which is not HD. And the reason I do that and not 360p is because I want at least a bit of quality, especially if I'm going to be putting it in a video that's 1080p in quality so that the webcam won't be fuzzy, hazy, blurry, whatever. So 480p and um, I obviously shrink that a little bit for my little face cam block. Okay, uh, but the way I do it is I open the webcam page software, I click record on 480p, make sure it's in the right place and everything. I record the sound on there as well. Okay, and it's important that you do that. I'll tell you why in just a second. You record sound on the webcam and you record sound on Fraps. So you start your webcam, go into your game, start your Fraps when you're ready, start talking. Then when you're done, you stop them both and you'll have two files. Or well, in Fraps' case, you might have a whole lot of files, but you take them, put them in Sony Vegas. They'll all be there in a long line. You take your webcam footage, plonk that in your Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere or whatever it is that you use. There are lots of programs. They all work equally well if you know how to use them. You put them both in there. Then you'll be able to sync the sound up quite easily. And from personal experience, I will be able to tell you that it will actually sync up. Because Logitech webcam software records at 30 FPS. My so my Fraps records at 30 FPS, or if it records at 60, it'll still be fine. It'll probably work just as well. Um, but ri rather try keep it on known FPSs. Regardless of that, it will sync up. If it doesn't, there is a solution. Just wait. You'll basically just put them at the same place. If you have those two streams in there, so your Fraps footage, your webcam footage and you play them both together then you'll hear the voices and you'll just be able to move them around till they're perfectly synced up till you hear only one voice and no echo when you record longer videos like 50 60 minutes hour two hours you might have the videos losing sync and that's only because of minor little jitters hiccups here and there and it sort of makes it lose sync over a longer period of time that's not a problem because then you'll probably just be separating it anyway and syncing them up separately. So once you've synced them up, you mute the volume on the webcam because the webcam recording, the volume from the webcam or the audio from the webcam won't be good quality compared to that of the one that Fraps records. So you do that. Then you've got the single audio from Fraps. You've got the webcam synced up. You place it where you want it on your screen and you're done. Make a pretty frame. Perfect. If it's not synced up, then what you do is you stretch or, com or compress the webcam footage a tiny bit, tiny bit. In Sony Vegas, you press control, you click and you drag. Okay. I have used so much Sony Vegas. I've done so much editing that I know every single little trick that you can do in there. Um, you press control, you drag it left or right to make it smaller or bigger and that would compress it because that's one big file the compression will work and that would mean that you'd try and get it to the same length and to fit with the audio so to sync up with the audio of your fraps so you have to mess around a bit with it okay it's not super difficult it just takes a tiny bit of practice it's better recording slightly shorter videos 20 to 30 minutes at most because as I said if you do get longer you might have syncing problems but it's not a big deal and if you do record it on a different FPS then again you should be able to stretch it a tiny bit to make it fit because say you record the one at 29.970 FPS and the other one at 30 solid standard straight then it wouldn't really be a problem because the discrepancy is so little there but hey there you go. My webcam is flashing funny stuff here, and I'm hoping it doesn't mess up my recording. If there are funny flashes on the webcam, I apologize. I don't know what that is, but that was the last question. If you have anything else to ask, feel free to leave it. There you go. Done. I need to go sleep now. I need to stop making a noise because it's approaching 11 o'clock, and Helene's going to be angry. So check back here soon for more. Leave questions in the form of comments because that's the easiest way for me nowadays. You can send them via my YouTube inbox or mail them at talesoflumen at gmail.com but comments seems to work best for me. Do that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Check back soon for more again. 
most popular. Happy leaving those questions. Happy that.